Well, welcome to the DFL Before DNF podcast. Hey. This is uh, my personal pursuit to success at the 100 mile distance. I've been in the sport for 10 years. I love it maybe more than anyone you've met. Like I'm obsessed with it. I, I'm obsessed. There's something magical to me about putting the 100 mile distance on my radar, like that, that there's always one I'm signed up for. I'm always looking forward to it. I just, I love what it means on to me, you know, in my own head, like that feels just like a crazy accomplishment. But I'm also the worst that you've ever met. I have uh, DNF'd seven of eight attempts at the 100 mile distance. And I don't care, I, I'm still, I, I love it. But this series that I'm working on, Trail Grid, it's, it's my, you know, it's, it's my ninth attempt, lucky number nine. I'm going back for Zion, I love Zion, I love the desert. I just wanna someday like, Everett Roos is like this Utah character who, when he was 19, disappeared in the desert and they never found him again. Like, I, I wouldn't mind if that happened <laughs> to me. Uh, but this time, I think I represent a lot of people who, who go out there because they love it, but they've got kids, they've got day jobs, and we sometimes, we often toe the line undertrained. And so my pursuit this time is I'm just reaching out to uh, experts, to people who can give me some wisdom, give me some insight on, on how to survive the late race urge to quit. And so you have come on my radar because you just keep popping up on my Instagram and uh, because you are focused on strength and the 100 mile distance. And that's super rare. Like there's more and more like, I see more and more fitness, like, you know, people doing more upper body stuff and, and, and ultra running more than ever. I think of Mike McKnight. Utah guy, he seems to be posting a lot of like strength work that he's doing. Yeah. But in the end, there's still, we don't always have time for it. If we're trying to do these 100 mile weeks or even 60, 70 mile weeks, we don't have time for it. And so that's why I'm stoked to come to Austin to talk to you and thank you for making the time to come yeah, talk to glad, us. Glad you guys are here. So before we go too far, I want to just get to know you a little bit as a person. Um, I mean, clearly, you know, even just watching you like the, since, the first, since I first found you on Instagram to now, like, you know, you've, you've more than 2x your followers on Instagram. It seems like content, ton, ton of engagement. So tell me a little about, about who you are. Like, we've just met five minutes ago. Yeah. So tell me about you. Um, small town Iowa boy. Um, really? Yeah, so I was raised, uh, was born in Iowa, super small town. Raised for about six, seven years in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Okay. Where the University of Arkansas is. Yeah. Um, moved back to Iowa uh, in my 10th grade year. <laughs> Spent 10th, 11th, and 12th grade back home, um, town so small, we didn't even have stoplights. What town? Uh, Melcher, Dallas, Iowa, middle of a cornfield. Melch, like it, Melcher, it Melcher, Mel Dallas. Melcher, Dallas. So there was two towns, one okay. was called Melcher, one was called <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> and, in between. And then, and then they, they find, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, they built a bridge in between okay. the two over, <laughs> over railroad tracks, and they merged it into Melcher, Melcher Dallas. Dallas. So it's Melcher-Dallas. Okay. Um, no stoplights. Uh, graduating class was 29. Um, closest Walmart Dang. was like 15, 20 minutes away. Dang. What, what uh, did your parents do? What's that? What did your parents do for work? Uh, my mom worked as a um, like a CMA, so a certified med aide at a nursing home. Uh, my dad was never in the picture. Okay. Um, both my grandparents uh, were. Uh, my grandfather was a doctor at the VA which was in Des Moines, which was- uh, Yeah, how far is that? Um, about an hour. Okay. Um, so they would commute an hour a day, or two hours total to, to, to get to work, grandparents yeah. did that. And so my grandparents and my mom both kind of co-raised me. Mm -hmm. um, it was just small town living. I mean, if you took a drone and you went up from the town, it yeah. would, you would see a square in the middle of a cornfield. Huh. And so I'm, I'm from not far from here. I'm actually, I was born in Brownwood. Okay which is about two hours north of here. I'm, I'm fifth generation, like, it, it's funny, I haven't been to Austin in 22 years, but I'm five or six generations back to this area right here, yeah. but I live in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Uh, grew up in Lubbock most of my life, though. Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. My little brother lives there. That, really? Yeah, you just moved there like a year ago. Oh, well, I'd love to hang out with you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I've been in Salt Lake for 22 years, but I grew up in Lubbock, Texas. Okay. And uh, I just had coffee with a really good old buddy, Matt Cochran. Uh, we were best friends junior high and high school. We're just talking about the trouble we got in. And Lubbock is a really big small town. It's 200,000 people. So yeah. 5,000, what sort of trouble did you get into? <laughs> Man, I tell you what. What was there to do? We used to, um, we would go, like, we would go sit, so we called it the east side uh -huh. of the town square. 
<laughs> so, you know, our buddies, you know, we would, like, back then it was like, which I say back then it was, you know, 2011, 2012, BlackBerry. Yeah. yeah. BlackBerry Messenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd like BlackBerry Messenger, like, hey, meet at East Side, 7 o'clock. <laughs> and everyone, you know, we all go up there in our trucks and our cars and we'd back in on the East Side and yeah. we'd hang out, we'd just wrestle each other, yes. we'd, you know, uh, just do the most random shit that, that my I love so the reason I love what I love about small town vibe is that there's nothing to do and so you have to get creative yeah yeah to like, like, like have like, fun like we would fight each other for fun and yeah. then like yes. like like that yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. it you know we would wrestle yeah. and we would we would fight we would break beer bottles and you know get the cops called on us and yeah. the, you know the one cop that works in town that you know knows your mom and knows everybody yeah. and he pulls up and he's like you keep doing this shit I'm, I'm gonna, gonna call, call your mom, mom. yeah <laughs> yeah I mean I mean that was you know traditional yeah. movie like like yeah. that that's, that's how I grew up we used to we were laughing about this earlier we used to go buy uh, Campbell's minestrone soup from the supermarket and put it in our mouths and pull up to stoplights and act like we're vomiting on cars <laughs> next to us just you oh, know, that's if good. you live in LA and you can go to like Disneyland yeah. you're always entertained you never have to yeah yeah no exactly and stuff. like we would you know you go fishing, like, you know, drive out to the gravel roads. We we called, uh, um, I told my girlfriend the other day, I go, we should go uh, gravel travel. And she's <laughs> like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, gravel travel. And <laughs> she's like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you don't? I'm like, no, this is as like you're 21, 20, you know. Yeah. Or, uh, maybe 20. You know, you grab, you, know, you get a case of beer and you go out in the gravel roads and you, <laughs> and she's like, you guys would go and drink and drive? I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, but we're on gravel roads, gravel so like, like, like no one else is out there. You're yeah. just on gravel roads. You're just hanging out. <laughs> Maybe stop in a field, have a couple more, go back yeah. home. Yeah. Like that was like... Small town. Like our parents did that. Our grandparents right. did that. Like, <laughs> yeah. like you get pulled over on a gravel road. Like, like there's no yeah. cops. You know, you don't... Like yeah. you just... You go gravel travel. And then, yeah. you know, you, you take the gravel back to, you know, a block from your house. Because uh -huh. you can get to your house by gravel somehow, I promise. <laughs> right, yeah. And you, you know, and then and you just pull in your like driveway, that. park your truck, and go you're inside. Good. All right, so you're there. You're Melcher, Dallas. Yep. Uh, graduate high school, then what? Um, I decided at that point, the status quo there was, you know, I mean, the median income is $30,000. Mm -hmm. And the status quo there was you would go and you would go work in a factory and, yeah. you know, do your 20 years and retire and live the good old boy life. So that's kind of, you know, when I was growing up in Fayetteville, you know, uh -huh. I wanted to go to the U of A. I wanted to go to college. Like uh -huh. I wanted to do all these, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, I was going to go to the U of A. And my friends kind of, you know, you don't go to college, like that's a waste of money. You just go to the factory and start making, you know, $20 an hour. And yeah. so I went straight to uh, 3M. Okay. Um, 3M to- They have a factory pack, to close? Pack. They, have a, they have a factory outside of Knoxville, Iowa. Okay. Um, Cause it's a branch off of, I think they're based out of Minneapolis. Okay. So not, then they have a, they, they're one in Iowa is based out of Knoxville. Now it's, okay. it's a very huge industry for factories like yeah. Vermeer. Have you ever heard of them? Uh -huh. yep. Vermeer, Vermeer is there in Pella, which is kind of oh, all, Pella. Yeah, all yeah, close. Yeah. yeah, so Pella is, it's Pella, Knoxville, Melcher, Dallas, like kind of uh, all in that same area. Got it. Um, so worked at 3M for a while. Quit there, worked at Vermeer for a while, 18 year old, got fired from Vermeer because I was just, a, I was a shit. Yeah. Um, and I was just sitting at home one night and I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to be here. Like I wanna, I, like I wanna be more, but I felt like at that time, like I had lost my chance at going to college. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really wanna go to college either as well. Like I, you know, I didn't wanna go sit, like I wasn't a great student. Yeah. Um, so I found the Iowa National Guard. Oh. Military. Interesting. Um, so I joined the guard. Okay. Um, went down to Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio to be a combat medic. Because mm -hmm. um, my thought was, is I'll join the military and I'll get the training and I'll get paid to do it. Yeah. Um, so did that. Um, actually ended up failing 68 Whiskey School, which is medic school. Okay. Because I was just a shit at that yeah. point and a bad student. Yeah. Um, so I had no choice. They're like, hey, you are now going to be a truck driver. So they sent me to truck driver school okay. immediately from Fort Sam. Um, went and became a truck driver, went to a, um, uh, a heavy equipment unit, learned how to be a gunner, um, shot big guns, did a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Interesting. Um, so within the guard, you are one week in a month, two weeks in the summer. Okay. Um, so yeah. for about a year, I came back. Um, and by that point, like I had been through, um, you know, I went through EMT school. So I'd been all the way through it. Mm -hmm. um, and didn't pass my final exam. So came back, actually did go to DMAC, Des Moines Area Community College, okay. um, to go get my EMT. Started kind of following in my mom's footsteps, grandparents' footsteps of being in the medical field. Yeah. Um, got my EMT, started working at a men's clinic, um, doing that type of stuff. And then 
I had the opportunity to work full time for the National Guard. Okay. Um, so took an active duty job and was active duty for almost six years. Total total time Boy. in service, um, uh, right about nine, almost ten years. Um, so I joined. I joined in 2014. Okay. Um, and I and I and I got out at the very beginning of the year of last year. Oh really? Um, so okay. almost ten years in service, um, working oh. mostly active duty. So. Worked on post every day in Des Moines, uh, Camp Dodge. Yeah. Worked at Midwest Counter Drug, um, okay. training like DEA, FBI, U.S. Marshals, stuff like that. Um, to do like building clearing. Okay. They were like a schoolhouse. Uh -huh. We're like really? a schoolhouse for law enforcement. Okay. Um, so helped helped them do that. Worked at um, the billeting office where people would come and train. We would get like buildings ready for them to train in. Yeah. Worked in a, a factory there on Camp Dodge as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then ended my time as a military recruiter. Oh. Um, so recruiting is, job what, recruiting is what killed it for me is I'm like, uh -oh. you know, I, I just, my heart wasn't in it yeah. and, um, a lot of shady shit happens in recruiting and, I and I, and I didn't want to be part of it. So, so that was, so that was around 2022, you started going on your off ramp. Yep. 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 So, so I started recruiting in, in late 2020 Okay. and then in 2021, I put out a national level packet, which is like, um, I applied for a, an active duty recruiting job nationwide. Okay. Um, got picked up by Virginia, so we <laughs> moved out to Virginia okay. um, and started recruiting out there, and that's where I found my love for running. Because we were in, yeah, so we were in Roanoke, yeah. which is right on the Appalachian Trail. Oh, gosh. And that's cool. I started running yeah. and just would run, and I mean, before work, I would run. After work, I would lift. Before work, I would run. Hmm. After work, I would lift. Just seven days a week. Really? And um, trail running. And just had no idea this what I was doing. Super iconic trip. And yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And actually, I went to. There was a store in Virginia called Runabout Roanoke. Okay. And I walked in, and there was a guy in there, and he's like, "Yeah, like, like, what's your 5K time?" And I'd ran a 5K mm -hmm. um, before that, and yeah. it was, uh, it was right like sub 17, just six, oh six, 16, 16 something. Crazy. And I told that's what, and I told him that, and he's like, "Oh, really?" Yeah, I'm right. Like, and I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, per mile. And you know, and because I'd never, I never trained. Like yeah. I, I, I had just done a five k, and, and I, I didn't know anything about anything at that point. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. Kid became friends with them later, and yeah. he's like, dude, he's like, he's like, I thought you were lying. He's like, when you came in, he's like, I, like, he's like, I didn't like you right off the bat. So I was like, this guy, <laughs> this guy's moving here, yeah. and he's lying. Yeah. And um, he was a D one, a D one runner, really? and okay. I started running with him, and he started like sharing knowledge with me and like learning what he was doing and um <laughs> and <laughs> learning <laughs> that's great that's not the trail <laughs> that's not but close to the welcome trip. to austin texas um <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that's great um yeah so so i started running with him and he was putting me through like he you know i'm gonna be honest he sent me um i was married at the time i got okay. divorced at the very beginning of last year when okay. i got out of the military and he sent me um, like a workout and it was like four by 400. Ah. And I'm like, 400 what? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's like, how much like, you didn't know. Yeah, I had no, yeah. Because, because when I was in high school, I went out for golf so I didn't have to run. Because you know, small uh -huh. town, right? Like, like yeah. all the guys go out for sports. And if you don't right. go out for sport, you're a loser. Right. Out of the you know, 11 guys we had yeah, in, yeah, in your class. So my excuse to everyone was like, yeah, dude, I, I want to golf. Like, like, you know, you guys go, yeah, I'm, I'm a golfer. Like, like I'm, yeah. you know, I'm Tiger Woods over here. Yeah, yeah. Because no, there's no way in hell I was running. Yeah. So I had no idea, I didn't do track, you know, I didn't know anything. Huh. So he taught me everything. Amazing. And, and threw it all at me in 2021. We ran together from April of 21, to December of 21. Okay. And that led me into my first marathon attempt. Which, which one I mean, was that? I could just keep going and flowing this whole year. Yeah. But, oh, I love it. Um, what was your first marathon? That was BPN. So during that time out in Virginia, I got connected with BPN. Okay. Um, started, because what happened was, is I was running all these miles. Uh huh. And I had, like, I started getting sick. Like, just, I had no energy and I, I couldn't mm. figure out, like, what was going on. Mm. Well, I wasn't eating. Like I, like I wasn't eating enough food. <laughs> yeah. And so I got on YouTube and I, I still remember to this day, like I remember right where I was sitting and I typed in how to eat like an endurance athlete. <laughs> Nick Bear. Nick Bear, Nick really? Bear, right there. Popped up right that there. That was 21? That was 21. Okay. So it was like everything I eat in a day to train for Ironman. Like he was training for an Ironman got at the it. time. 
and like, yeah, like this is, you know, this is super right. cool. Like, yeah. like, you know, and started watching his videos, got into BPN, started taking the supplements. Um, and then they had this BPN marathon um, um, that they only had like 200 tickets to, sold out in like eight seconds. Nice. And by the grace of God, I got in. Like, I have no idea how I got in. It was my huh. very first marathon ever. Huh. Um, that was January of 22. Okay. And I went down, no training. Like, like yeah, I'd been training with Trey, sure. you know, and he, we'd been doing these, you know, like, like, marathon you know, specific training. No, I, like, like, we were running 60 miles a week on the trails and doing a speed yeah. day of, like, 16 400s at 60 seconds. Yeah. I mean, like, like, he was just murdering me. Yeah. <laughs> but no structure. Like, like he, yeah. he, who knows? Went out. Ran the BPN marathon, 259.52. Dang. And Jeff Cunningham, are you familiar with him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeff Cunningham comes up to me afterwards, and he's like, how do you know, how'd you train for this? And I just kind of like looked at him, <laughs> and he's like, you didn't do any like VO2 max threshold right. <laughs> power, you know? And I'm like, and I, I, I still, I, I wasn't even, I didn't say a word. Yeah. And he's like, you have no idea what I'm saying, do you? And he's like, and I'm like, no. I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> He's like, okay. He's like, he's like, here's my number. He's like, call me. Like, yeah, that's you know, call awesome. me when you get home. Crazy. Um, at that same time, Natasha Vandermeer yeah. approached me, yeah. um, who was Nick Bear's coach for Ironman. Oh, dang. And she was like, hey, I saw what you did. Like, I think that you would be great. Like, you know, have you ever thought about doing Ironman? Yeah. So now I had Jeff Cunningham and Natasha, and I'm like, what do I do? I went, I went with Natasha. Okay. Um, I was like, I would love to do an Ironman because just so happens that Ironman Des Moines was in June. Oh. And we had just moved back from Virginia because we were there for the year. Yeah. Had just moved back and I'm like, I want to sling an Ironman in my in my hometown because yeah. now we lived in Des Moines. Yeah. Um, started training with Natasha, doing like, that was my very first coach, specific training. And at that time I started studying for my personal trainer. I started studying nutrition. I started studying performance enhancement. I was like, I, like I'm good at this. Yeah. Like I was like, now I want to know. So you're, you're marrying like this, I, I don't know if, this medical path that you were kind of on. Yes. You've started yeah. to marry that now. So naturally, the way that you yeah, told yeah. the story. Yeah, and, and that comes with, with like running. like how I told you guys, where like I'm kind of obsessed with, you know, like we just talked about before the cameras were on, body, yeah. you know, seeing body recomp in, in mm, fitness and interesting. you know, macronutrients and you know, playing with um, you know, the vitamins and nutrients that you take and like like yeah. I love that type of stuff. Yeah. And so oh, then awesome. with with Natasha, um, I started doing, you know, specific training and that led me into, I won the, the Des Moines half marathon in February. Um, what was your time? Uh, just one, 120 flat, uh, which, I mean, you're in Des Moines, Iowa. So, sure, so at still, that point, like, 120 flat. Yeah. So, amazing. and that was my, that was my first half. Okay. Um, and then March went down during my, you know, this is like peak Ironman training. Yeah. Went down to my very first ultra in the hometown in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Oh. And, that, and now at that point, my grandparents had moved down there. Okay. Back, they had moved back where, yeah. you know, cause that's where, um, like I said, I grew up. They moved down there and they lived there. And I'm like, how cool would it be to go back, yes. you know, to where yeah. I was kind of raised yeah. and, and do this ultra. So I get down there and we start the race and I'm leading it. And I'm talking to these guys behind me and I don't even, you know, who knows who, like I have no idea. And they're like, yeah, like we run hundreds, you know, and fifties. And, um, you know, and they're like, wait, what do you do? And I'm like, I, I'm in an Ironman block right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I went on to, I set the course record and I won it. Um, what was it, 50K? It was 50K. Okay. Uh, I have What's a screenshot called? of it. It's Sticks and Stones. Sticks and Stones. Um, so, and it's in Devil's Den State Park. Okay. Um, decent elevation. I think I ran around five hours. But that's that cool. was super cool. Like that was that right there where like that's where I fell in love. Like I already knew I loved the trails from mm. Virginia, mm -hmm. but doing that that ultra distance, you know, yeah. like that thirty, yeah. like hitting thirty, I was like, oh, okay. oh my god. Like I was like, I, I, was, like, I, was, I was like, this is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. And at that point, I was riding a high from going sub three, from winning the the Des Moines half mm -hmm. to winning this ultra. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like you know. I think I could be really good at whatever I'm trying to do. Whatever here. this is, yeah. Um, did Ironman Texas? Went ninth overall in my age group. Where was that one at? Um, Des Moines. Or I'm sorry, oh, you said Ironman Texas. Texas. Yeah. I, no, no, no. I did. I did that this year or okay. last year. I did Ironman Des Moines. Uh -huh. That was my first Ironman. Right, went yeah. ninth overall. Yep. Um, and then 
That was June. July, I did a 50 mile or a 40 mile run with the American flag. Okay, um, I saw pictures. So I, of yeah, that. so that was this year. So okay. I did it last. Or I did it two years ago. Um, did 40. This year I did 52. Really? This year. This is weird. It's January. I know. I know. Last year I did 52. Yeah. Um, where, where 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 did you do that run? So I started at the Des Moines Capitol. Okay. The, the, when I did 52, I started at. Or I'm sorry, when I did the 40, I started at the Capitol. I ran from the Des Moines Capitol all the way down to Knoxville, okay. where the racetrack was. Okay. Um, because I skipped a lot of years here, I professionally raced cars. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're probably like, racetrack, why? Yeah, what's the so significance I of racetrack? I, yeah. I, I, I race sprint cars. Okay. Um, oh. When we moved back to Iowa from Arkansas, uh-huh. I started racing go-karts. Adrenaline junkie. Yeah. So I yeah. started racing go-karts in like, in like... <laughs> 10th grade okay. and raced go, go-karts on dirt, 10, 11, 12, um, joined the military, came back, still raced for about two or three years, um, and then moved up to racing sprint cars at Knoxville, okay. which are massive, fast cars. They have a wing on top to like plant them to the ground. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show I'd you when we're done. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, so having to move out to Virginia in 21, uh-huh. I, sold, I, I sold everything and I, I retired from that type of racing. So I think really like that's kind of where I picked up, yeah. you know, so then I go to Virginia and I'm like, oh, running? Like, you know, yeah. and, and that's I mean, I'll where- I'll be honest, now, now think, as I get to know you, the, the sprint car thing tied a lot of, tied it all together in yeah. some way. It's like, yeah. well, yeah, but 100 miles and military and, and, you know, Ben and I were chatting last night, like this connection between, you know, retired military and 100 mile or- Well, I was just talking with my girlfriend about, yeah. But you st- there's still another thing. Like you- you've still got some. You're more multifaceted to me. Like it's it's not as simple as you were in the military and now you're trying 100 milers. Yeah. But the sprint car thing is like okay. You're yeah. also like bring bringing adrenaline to 100 miles. Yeah. To yep. s- in some ways, yeah. which is yeah. Not- so sprint cars are like you're th- you're looking at like 100 and anywhere from 110 to like 140 miles an hour yeah. on dirt in a circle. <laughs> so like totally you, yeah. So so bring that with like two. A race, I think you did Leadville in 28 hours, if I saw correctly. Is this that year, right? yeah, but I had I did Leadville 1 and I did not complete it. Oh, well, okay. I'm sorry, I call it Leadville 1. <laughs> Leadville, <laughs> I, have, I have Leadville 1 and Leadville 2. Leadville 1 was was right out, so I, uh, right after that 40 miler, uh-huh. there was a charity that okay. saw me on Instagram and they reached out and they're like, hey, we had a runner that was supposed to run for us, he got hurt. Oh. This was literally like July before 20, that. 20 something. So like a couple weeks before. Yes. <laughs> and they're like, you know, we saw what you did. Like, would, do you want to run? Yeah. And at that point, I only knew Leadville because of Nick Bear. Like, I had okay. no idea what Leadville was. I'd just seen Nick do it. I'd watch a documentary. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, I'll let you know. Thanks. Bye. Click. Yeah. And I, like, sat in the truck. I was literally in my driveway. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> like. Should I do And it? I'm, like, looking up the race date. Uh-huh. And, and we are 29 days out. Yeah. And... I called my mom and I'm like, yo, because at that point I was gaining a little bit of traction, you know, yeah. so like she had known like, you know, that, you know, someone with, you saw me on the Instagram space, so it was easy to, easy to explain to her. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. She's like, yeah. She's like, do it. Cool. Called him back. I'm like, I'm in. Yeah. Make it to Leadville. Never, like I live in Iowa. I, I couldn't train altitude, couldn't train hills. I didn't have enough time. I was already in yeah, my, what's the altitude I was already in my taper. <laughs> like, what's your altitude there? Probably like negative five. I don't know. I think it's like, like, like 90 feet. I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, That's it's funny. it's nothing. Yeah. Um, I mean, Iowa, like, is just, like, for reference, like, I had under 1,000 feet of elevation gain on my 52-mile run. <laughs> like, like it's, yeah. it's, it's nothing. Yeah. Um, so get to Leadville. You know, most I'd run is 40. And I'm out there, like, we're running. Like, I did the front half, I think, in, like, 11 hours at Leadville. And... I'm out there talking to people that are up there, and I'm like, "Yeah, I've never ran over 40." And they're like, "Oh, like you're fucked." Yeah. Like, like, you know, <laughs> Wait, how, how many days before the race did you arrive? Uh, I got out there Wednesday, so okay. I was there Wednesday, Thursday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The race was on Saturday. So the elevation, I, like the you know, you're now at 10,000 feet. The elevation fucked with me more okay. last year than it did the year before. Okay. So the only thing I noticed year one, which was 20, 2022, uh-huh. was. Let's say I was running at a 10 minute pace when I was doing my shakeouts. Yep. Wednesday, my heart rate was like 175. Thursday, my heart rate was like 165. Okay. Friday, it was like 155. Okay. So like I watched the heart rate kind of taper down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I get out there. Um, 
life was good. Life was great. Yeah. I summited Hope's Pass, 11 hours, came back, came back again, went down. And as I'm going down, like my, I remember coming down Hope's Pass, so I'm at like probably 54, 55, mm -hmm. and my knees were like hitting mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. And I couldn't like, I couldn't keep my knee, like the, the legs were done. Was, was that a strength thing? Yes. Or an altitude? Okay. Yes, it was complete it was strength. your legs were maxed. Yes, my legs were not. So then I get to Twin Lakes inbound. Mm -hmm. I sit down in the chair and I'm eating and like, I'm like, hell yeah, like we're gonna crush this bitch. Like we have, you know, <laughs> we have 18 hours until the cutoff. Yeah. And I go to stand up and I, I literally couldn't, like I, 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 hmm. Your I, like I felt fine. I just, yep. I couldn't stand up to the point where like my little brother who was there, I just was telling you about, had to put his arms under mine and stand me up yeah. and allow me to lock my knees mm -hmm. in order to like be able to go. Yeah. Um, I walked from Twin Lakes to May Queen, which is the final. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't run a single time after that. And that's from 56 to 87. So I, I walked 50, 50K. <laughs> and in the rain, overnight, yeah. cold, and I made it to, I made it to May Queen about 15 minutes too late. Ah, uh, okay. So they cut me off by time. Yes. Um, <clears throat> that was the craziest thing I'd ever experienced because I made it to May Queen and I come out and at May Queen, you come out and there's a road, the, there's a road uh -huh. and it goes this way down to like where all the crew is. And then, you know, you do your last aid station yeah. or the road like keeps going this way. When I came out, they were parked there with the truck and I literally just got in the truck and we left. Is it? Now, like it, like I just yeah. literally walked off the course, got into a vehicle and left. Yeah. Never saw May Queen again. Huh. Never saw the finish line again. <laughs> like, Interesting. That was it. Uh huh. And... Um, that set me on fire. Really? Right? Like, yeah, like that, that, I, I, I tell people all the time, like, you want to talk about a, a greatest failure? Uh -huh. My greatest failure was, I would have never learned how to be who I am today if I wouldn't have went to Leadville in, in, in 2022 and failed. Yeah. And that right there was like, that lit such a fire under my ass. Mm -hmm. And then going into 2023, getting, you know, at that point, like I knew, like, like I knew in August, I was like, I'm getting the hell out of the military and I'm going to like, this is going to be my life. Yeah. Huh. And I had August, September, October, November, December, January. I was like, I like, 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 like I was starting to plan out the race schedule and the yeah. military was like, you know, you don't have enough leave. You can't, you know, you can't. And I was like, it, it's time to, you know, wow. time to, time to kick rocks. Uh huh. And then at that same time, um, you know, my wife and I got married super young. We had a phenomenal marriage. It was great. I have nothing bad to say, but we were just, we were just, Going she wanted hard. me to stay in the military. She, you know, she was in school full time and we, and I, I wanted, at that point I'd been in Austin so much from BPN and, mm. and triathlon training. Like I was like, I want to move to Austin. Yeah. And it was just, so we separated literally like a week later and it was horrible. Like I really didn't see it coming. Yeah. But then at that point, like I sat in it and I'm like, I'm like I, I I I can now do anything. Like I was like I like you know, that's an interesting I'm, feeling. I'm getting out of the military. Yeah. I'm getting you know separating. You know, I'm getting a divorce. I'm like, it was almost freeing for a moment yeah. where I'm like, whatever I want to do in life now, hmm. I have nothing holding me back. Hmm. And that was on a that was on a Wednesday that I like had that like I was literally sitting in my bedroom just in tears and I'm like what you know what is this like what's the point yeah and we uh we get i get to that point and i called my buddy who was down here uh-huh um and he was staying at an airbnb he's from fargo and he was oh, staying nice. at an airbnb and i'm like hey uh i'm gonna come down and hang out with you like i didn't tell him like what was going on uh -huh. and he's like yeah dude like you know come on down like the weather's nice like like let's get it um and i came to austin with three thousand dollars in the bank account and not a single plan <laughs> Literally, like, like, huh. like, we have to. We were you we still working at BPN? Did you say that? Or are you? At I was. That, at so the time? I was an uh, I was an ambassador athlete okay. with them at the time. Okay. Um. So that's why it was Austin, because I was like, dude, like BPN's there, like yeah. the culture, all my, you know, yeah. all these people I know, and uh, got down here, um, February twenty eighth. Okay. Of of last year. Oh, not even a year. No, not even Dang. a year yet. Dang. So got down here. Um, 
and yeah, then this year was just, this year was like the, I'd like to say like, like this year with my success was like, this was like the coming out party yeah. of like, of building, building who I am. And I took the risk on like, I was like, you know, I, I bet on myself, like, you know, all this cliche shit that people yeah, say a hundred percent. Like, yeah. like I said, fuck it. Like, like, right. like, here we go. And that was yeah. with, and by, like I told you, I got my, you know, certification in nutrition and performance enhancement and yeah. um, personal training. And I had had some athletes at that time. Uh-huh. I was making like a grand a month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I was like, hey, I have a thousand dollars a month. I was like, I'll move to Austin. I have 3K in the bank account. You know, I have these Airbnbs, like, you know, I have this Airbnb, you know, I'll figure it out. Yep. And um, I figured it out. I mean, really, like, that's, you <laughs> that's know, I, I, I told myself, I was like, you know, this is, this is me. I was like, if I have to, if I have to live under a bridge, I'll live under a bridge, but yep. I'm going to, I'm going to make this life work. Yeah. Um, because this is what, like, in 2022, this is what I found out that I really wanted. Yeah. Leading into 2023. Yeah. So you've got all of these things sort of swirling around the the ultra the the fitness the betting on yourself the cliche stuff who were who was inspiring you at the time who were you looking to thinking you know 3000 in the bank making a thousand bucks a month some people would feel that and feel like discouraged mm-hmm. you saw that as like game on like i saw it as I'm, like as like as like there's one option here yes. and and it's a plan A and a plan A only. My plan B was literally going to be sleeping under a bridge yeah. until I figured it out, truly. So what, what voices were out there inspiring you? You know what I mean? Like, who are the people? Who are the, like, what, what propelled you? What, did you? what podcast did you listen to? Like, what were the things that were giving you that confidence in yourself? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I found, I would say, you know, this was maybe like, you know, in my subliminal mind Mm -hmm. you know not really like right there in front of me but um i found running yeah i went to virginia and i found running but i truly found running because i found david goggins Uh, and my mom was a single mom yeah we were piss fucking poor yeah like we went through the shit yeah and i was a piece of shit growing up like i was a shitty kid um and i remember looking at goggins and like and reading his book and being like dude if that guy can do that yeah why can't i yeah and mm-hmm. and that's probably something else cliche but it's sure. true like it is so true but not everybody engages with it and says i can do that too you know yeah. what i mean and i think that's what's special about david goggins is that he's found like he's called a lot of men into like yes. intention intentionality yes but you heard it you you engage with it and he was like this is what i'm looking for yeah. and it just kind of clicked yeah yeah 100 mm-hmm. percent. and and that was really kind of like i said it wasn't like front and center like i wasn't driving to austin being like yeah david goggins you know right. but like but like he touched me so, like like that book touched me so well that that was something I carried with me all through 2021, mm. leading into 2022. Yep. And it was just like, you know, if he could go through all that shit and make it through and now, you know, he's, he's wrote a book and he's a multimillionaire and he yep. doesn't have to work another day in his life. Right. I'm like, why can't I do that? <laughs> and that was kind of the mentality. Like, like even to the point where come May, May of 2023, I was so broke, I had to sell my Ironman bike. Oh, dang. Yeah, so come, I got here in February. I was here in March. In April, I ran the BPN Marathon. Uh-huh. Um, a week later, I did Ironman Texas. Mm-hmm. It was like all, it was a little challenge, same week thing. Yep. And then in May, I literally like hit a point where I'm like, I can't even pay rent. Mm. And because I was still trying to build the coaching and yeah. and all of that, and I had to, I sold my that bike that I did my Ironmans with. I sold that bike because I couldn't, I couldn't pay rent. Dang, yeah, that's crazy. So, so there were, you know, there was struggle. There was a lot yeah. of struggle, which huh. relates right back to the ultra distance. Right, yeah. and so and so like honestly, the, I see so many interesting. As I've talked to so many people about this kind of this next question here, it feels like super. Uh, like, I, I'm so interested in your take on this because now I get selfish. Like, all right, I, I've i fallen apart for some justified, like when I look back at my seven DNFs, my, my first 100 mile attempt, I had that same leg problem at like mile 68 at Zion. Like I was going into, I was like, can I, can I keep going? Can I not? I'm not, I'm just not sure. I don't know what it's like to be at this high mileage. I sit down for a sec, try to get some good food in me and I stand up and then my legs are gone. I can't yeah. even like step up on a route. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Uh, so I look back at all of my DNFs. So I think I can give you the story of all seven. Like I, I mean, because they've they've haunted me. They live with yeah, me for sure. I get it. And 
the one the one that I finished, like I can even say like, okay, now, you know, that was my third attempt. I finished it and I thought everyone after that was going to be great. Well, then I've DNF the next five. Some of them may be good reasons, some of them not. But the thing that I'm on the hunt right now for is, how, first off, like I start to really fall apart at like 55, 55 miles, six, like really like ugly, like real ugly. And so one of the things I'm looking for is, yeah, you can fall apart. I have a, my buddy, Jeremy, he can fall apart at mile 40, former Navy, military mindset kind of guy, and he can finish the 100. He's got this switch that I'm trying to like learn, glean from and take from him. He's, we're going to be side by side at Zion most of the time, so he's going to drag me along, hopefully, yeah. hopefully. But first question, this late race survival, like how do I push, how do I push, how do I make my body fall apart at 80 and only have to slosh through 20 miles instead of it falling apart at 55? If, if we're just looking at late race survival from a fitness standpoint, does that make sense? Like how do I push back like yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Ugly, my, my, yeah. my biggest thing that I did in preparation for Leadville 2, which was last year, uh -huh. um, was it didn't, because during Ironman, I broke my fibula. Okay. So mile, mile 24, so I, I, I ran the BPM marathon. I won the BPM marathon on Saturday. Nope, on Sunday. Okay. And then I did Ironman Texas on Saturday. Okay. So Sunday to Saturday. Yeah. And during Ironman Texas, at mile 24 in stride, the left leg hit and it just was like a lightning bolt. Oh God. And the, the good thing is, is that the fibula only carries like 10% of your body weight. So I was able to just keep going. <laughs> Um, did you so in your mind was it like oh it broke um no okay. no no i was just, like, just oh, this in, in my mind i was like no i mean i was like oh like, like i really fucked this up like yeah. like like something is is bad and you can like see me kind of like hobbling at the finish yeah um but i didn't know i didn't know i really messed it up up until you know all the adrenaline wore off yeah. and we were standing there and i was like talking to somebody yeah. and i went to like step back and it just like buckled and i ended up going to the med tent so, but with that being said, what I'm saying is that I took, I took 62 days off, or 59, 50, 61. I, okay. took, I took two months off. Yeah. So, like you're counting the days, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't run all of May uh -huh. and some of June. Okay. So coming into Leadville training, I now have <laughs> six weeks. Yeah. So I built my miles back up, um, went from 7, 18... 32, 86, 100. Dang. And then I did 100, 100, and then tapered. And you just doing that around Austin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have uh, I have so many routes around Austin that I'm nice. like, this is my 16 mile route. Nice. This is my eight. This is my 10. This oh, is my cool. 20. Um, but but where I'm going with this is that I didn't have a lot of miles, a lot of weeks of miles under my belt. Yeah. But what I did do daily is. Number one, I would do doubles. So I, okay. would, I would run in the morning and I would run in the evening to make sure that the legs were fatigued. I didn't do that for Leadville 1, not okay. that I had time to even train. And I would pull, the, I would pull a sled. So hmm. I would do a half hour to 45 minutes with a sled, like a weighted... Just like around a park? Or? No, so we, like have a, a we have a gym. Yeah, okay. so we have a gym here and there's, there's turf. So probably, it's like you won't be able to see here, but like from us to that tree. Yep. And okay. what I would do is I would, I would, I would push the sled down and then you have like a rope on your, on your back and I would walk the sled back. Hmm. And I would do that six days a week and for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. What is that doing for you? So that's, that's kind of, um, as you're coming back, if you lean into that sled as you're pulling, um, it's really putting the quad under a lot of stress. Okay. So what I would do is I would run, like during my peak week, mm -hmm. I did 120, 122 miles in six days. That was my peak week for Leadville. Which isn't really needed, but at that point, like <laughs> I was so far behind, I was like, yeah. I need to catch up. Yeah. So I'd run 20 miles in the morning, and I would come back at like five o'clock, and I'd run four miles, and then I would lift and I would pull that sled. So by that point, like I'm so like I'm so tired, mm -hmm. my legs are fatigued, like my body's fatigued, that I would, my legs would already be tired, my legs would be under stress, and I would pull that sled yeah. to really mimic, because I remember what it felt like year one for Leadville trying to go down a mountain 
yeah. you know, and try to like uh, hold yourself up. I see. So the or, muscles that you're really the muscles to max that, yes. out are those muscles. Yes. 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 One hundred percent. And then and then when you're leaning into that as well, it's really working your glutes. So you're really pulling, you know, you're pulling with your glutes as well. Yeah. Which you think if you're going to go uphill. Right. You're, you know, you're using mm. your glutes. Okay. Um, so I found a lot of success in, in pulling the sled. Interesting. Um, How would someone uh, who doesn't, like, I don't belong to a gym like that. Is there anything else that I could do? To yeah, actually, this is kind of wild. There is a, um, do you have a truck? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's a device out there that's called Sled Connect. <laughs> Okay. And it's like 200 bucks, maybe. Huh. But I also did this before Leadville because my buddy had it. Yeah. Um, and it hooks in to your hitch and it's a, it's, it's like a field goal post. Uh -huh. Hooks into your hitch and we were pushing and pulling trucks in oh. the parking lot at the gym. Interesting. Yeah. So okay. like, so we had, I actually have a, I, there's a video on my Instagram. I'll, I'll pull it up for you if you remind me. But yeah. I literally had a, had huh. a, uh, like a ratchet strap around my waist yeah and i'm like pulling this truck in the parking lot <laughs> so okay um you know there's there's devices out there like that um you can also buy you know buy your own weighted sled um okay take it out to a park like we're at right now okay and you know the push pull sleds um you can get a car tire oh you know okay. cut a car tire yeah. get a rope Tie yeah. it around, you know, tie around your waist. And so sometimes you're walking forward, and sometimes are you going back? Like yeah, yeah. The... So I would do all three. So I would, uh, I would push. Yeah. I would push. I would pull, and then I would also like, if you were the sled, I yeah. would, I would pull it this way as well. Okay. So I would push it. I would pull it backwards, and then I would pull it forwards. Okay. Just to kind of, you know, because at that point, like my my hip flexors, like everything was so tired. Yes. That you know. I'm just putting it under stress even more. Right, so some of that, because like, my hip flexors are so unpredictable to me. Yeah. So are you, is some of that stuff that you're recommending that's really strengthening? Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. And then what I'm leaning into a lot this year is, is trying to do a lot of mobility work. Okay. Um, and prioritizing, you know, that, that, that's the great thing, right? Is it's so hard for me to tell, like, to tell people this because I've been there and I've had the nine to five. Right. And I've had the, the full-time job where, you know, it, it's hard to, yeah. and I respect that. Like, like I was there, like I was waking up at 4 a.m. I was going to bed at, at 11 p.m., yeah. you know, to get my training in. Yeah. But now for me, it's like, yeah, I can sit here and be like, yeah, so I wake up, I get my run in, I go home, I eat, I do an hour of mobility, I go, you know, back and I run again, and then I go to the gym and I lift weights. Like, that's what, what I, it, you know. What it, help me with mobility. Help me understand that. Yeah, what do you so mean? Um, mobility really is the, the nitty and gritty shit that you don't like, like stretching. Oh, okay. And static stretching. The stuff so, that you, in the moment doesn't feel like you're adding value. Exactly, really. exactly. The stuff that, like, just really sucks. Like, I'll get a band uh -huh. and um, go to the gym, put the band around a pole, and you know, do ankle mobility. Uh -huh. I can't even stand up straight. I'll do ankle <laughs> mobility. Um, you know, where you can get where like you put the you put it around, you scoot back as far as you can. It's putting so much pressure on your hip, like it's pulling your hip out. Yeah. Oh. You know, it's so like that. Like like you know, yeah. stretching isn't always just you yeah. know you know doing this yeah. and you know you're getting ready for a race. Like there's a lot of banded stretches that you can do. Okay. Um, you know, where it's really like tugging on different areas. Um, so is, is the mobility, the benefit to mobility, because like, you know, as the race goes on, first off, like my pack, no matter how much I try and train, the upper middle of my back always just by like mile 35 is just like brutal. So, you know, I'm always trying to stretch. But as the race goes on, my body gets tight, you know, for ob probably obvious. I mean, you're doing something crazy and yeah. trying to do this. But like it gets to the point where, you know, like you turn, can't turn around very well. Yeah. And my neck starts to get stiff. Is mobility helping that stuff? Yes, 100%. Okay. Because the thing is, like you can, you know, you can work mobility into your routine uh -huh. for years, like 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 just just like you would with weightlifting, right? Yeah. Like 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 you're working at doing bench press, you know, twice a week, over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And you know, over that time, like your your bench press is going to get better. If you're working mobility, like, have you read Goggins' book? Uh, he has two books, right? Yes. I've read the first one. Okay, so the first one he talks about, he got super, super sick. Like, this is yes. towards the end of the book. He got yep. super sick. Yeah. Couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. Thought he had a, had a disease. Uh-huh. And he was yes. just so fucking tight that, uh, like, that was the yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you go, yeah. so go back, go back now, now okay. that I've said that, and yeah. listen to that. Uh-huh. And, like, now this same guy is telling people, and no one will want to listen, because mm -hmm. no one likes to stretch, 
that he's stretching for an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening. Like, like he is, he is dedicating mm. time to stretching. Yeah. He just did a podcast with um, Huberman. Yep. And in that podcast, he's still saying the same thing. He's like, I'm still having trouble today. He's like, he's like when I start running, he's like, I'm limping for like the first like two or three miles. Like it takes me so much time to like warm up. And he's got those crappy knees. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean the whole like his, his yeah. legs are all fucked. Yeah. So so he's still like getting, what he's, his point is that he's still having to loosen up a lot yeah, early yeah. in his. And then I found, I found a lot of success recently, like you and I have talked about with, um, and you know, and there's, there's many different, there's, there's many people that will, that will say positives to this and negatives to that. Like, yeah. like I know, um, you know, Sally McRae oh, yeah. is, yeah. you know, she's doing a lot of dumbbell movements. She's doing a lot of mobility type hip bridges with dumbbells and stuff like that. And I know for sure, like that, that is working for her. Yeah. But the thing is, 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 is different things work different for everybody because our right. bodies are all different. Yeah. For me, I'm finding success in, in CrossFit. Because for me, like I tell, I tell people that I think CrossFit is the running of weightlifting. <laughs> okay. CrossFit is the running yeah. of weightlifting because it's yeah. always like every minute on the minute, um, you know, you're gonna snatch and you're gonna clean and you're gonna squat yeah. and it's like bang, 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 right? You see these, you know, the bodybuilders that are out there and it's like, hey, I'm gonna do one set of 10 and you know, there we go, okay, took 90 seconds, now I'm gonna rest for two minutes. You know, and that's the, the, you know, there's not a, there's not a lot in that, but I found yeah. in CrossFit, you know, when you're doing a power clean, you're working so many other muscles that I don't think that you can hit during the bodybuilding process, during, during the hypertrophy process, which yeah. is, you know, muscle building, bodybuilding. Okay. So in a clean, for me, it's like, okay, so you're familiar with the power clean? No. So power clean <laughs> is just like a deadlift stance. Okay. We're going to come here and with a clean, you're going to lift it up. You're going to pop it at your hips. You're gonna come down like this, mm -hmm. and you're gonna come up. Okay. That's a clean. So you're taking a you're taking a, a barbell, and you're coming up your legs. So you're doing a deadlift motion. Okay. You're popping it with your hips. So you're using your hip flexors here. You're hitting the bar. You're pulling uh, up okay. with your traps. You're using your arms, using uh, your biceps. You're dang. flipping it, and now you have your now you have to get under the bar. You're using your legs to catch it. Yeah. And then you're using your stabilizers to hold it, and then you're using your legs to push up. So How many muscle groups did I right. just hit there, right? <laughs> yeah, interesting. So it's different when like, you know, you do bench press. Okay, cool. You just worked your pecs. How's right. that going to help you be a better runner? Right. And, you know, uh, I think about the, uh, the uh, overhead squat. So an overhead squat in CrossFit is um, same thing. I was looking for like a long stick or something. <laughs> so you take a barbell, uh -huh. take a barbell and you have your hands out wide. You're working on your stabilizers. Yeah. You have your hands out wide. You're coming here. You're holding this weight above your head, and you're coming down, and you're squatting. Oh, dang. And then you're coming up. So instead of it being a back squat where you're just on your, you know, your back squat, and you're using your glutes and your hamstrings and your quads, you're just squatting. The overhead press, you're using your core, which how much do we need to use our core in running? Right. And, uh, so much. So you're using your core. You're using your shoulders. You're balancing. You're using the extra muscles in your legs to hold that weight above your head. Mm -hmm. And then as you come down, your, your hip flexors are engaged, your mm. glutes are engaged. Okay. So I've been finding a lot of success. Hmm. Now, I haven't tested it yet. It's right. going to be tested this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I haven't tested it yet. But I've been finding so much success in, in being able to, I also feel like, like, yeah, like I'm sore from CrossFit, but I've been doing CrossFit five, six times a week mm -hmm. and running 100 mile weeks. Yeah. And I like, there's times where you go for a 20 mile run, right? And you like get in your truck and you drive away and you're like, oh man, like I'm so tight. Like this is horrible. Yeah. But then I go in the evening and I'll do CrossFit and I'll do these overhead squats and I'm stretching out yeah. my hips. Okay. You know, like, 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 yeah, I'm tired and I'm not doing, you know, a shit ton of weight. Right. But I'm at that same time, I'm like, man, like my hips are super tight. Well, yeah. during that process, my hips are getting stretched out. Hmm. And just doing a lot of these, you know, compound movements as well, like doing a lot of deadlifts and doing yeah. a lot of back squats and front squats and front squats as well is what I did, you know, leading into Leadville because you're, when you're doing front squats, you're, you have the weight here, you're promoting, you know, major quad yeah. use. The biggest thing is that's going to fall apart first. Like you just said, you're like, yeah. I couldn't even like step over a stick. Why? Yeah. Because of your quad. Yeah. It's because of the quad. Yeah. It's just like twitching like uh -huh. crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but obviously there are people out there who like 
Like, think about Courtney DeWalter. Yeah. Have you ever seen her lift a weight? No. Maybe she does, but she yeah, doesn't right. tell people that, right? Right, totally. And she's the best, maybe, you know, yeah. or she's one of the best, if not the best female runner out there. Yeah. She doesn't lift weights. Yeah. So maybe we just throw everything that I fucking set out the window. Well, yeah, also, I mean, she's she's got to be an outlier because I think her diet, she also... Is, yeah, yeah. You know, she, I can't the remember... Beer and... and yeah. I love that. Me yeah. too. I love right. it. Like, right. like yeah. but, you know... So but that's, but everything we just like, said, take it with a grain of salt, yeah. but it is very different for everyone, but there are multiple but things the, but, but the other 99% of us out mm -hmm. there, you know, we need this stuff that you're saying. Yeah. And to, yeah, even to think about like the mobility, to think about the certain, yeah, like this stuff, spend more time on it. And then you got any recommendations for like, I get this a lot from other runners too of my, of my ilk. You know, that center back just hurts. Yeah. And I don't, if it's muscle weakness, if it's form, you know, over time, our, you know, our form starts to get really what bad. I, what I really like doing recently is the ski erg. You know what the skier is? Mm -hmm. So it's the CrossFit machine. It's the skier. So it's the, you've probably seen it, the machine where you grab the handles uh -huh. and you pull down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So doing, I did a lot of that leading into Leadville. Number one, I would just, I would pull it down and I would do a lot of these. Yeah. Because I remember when I first did Leadville, how bad my trap, my uh, triceps hurt because of my pulls. Yeah. So I bring it down, and you know you're working that that motion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I really enjoy doing a lot of the ski erg because I feel like if something on your body is hurting during during a run, yeah, it's probably not being worked enough. In my opinion. That's right. That's what. And yeah. and so you know when it comes down, if you're like man, like. I'm having this type of back pain, yeah. you know, like, and, yeah. it, and if oh. it's, if it's in that center back, yes. then, then there's, you know, where you can go and you can do, you know, you can do cable rows at the gym where yeah. you're sitting there with the cable and you're rowing back okay. and you're working, you know, you're working those yeah. muscles yeah. to, you know, because if you, if, if you work those muscles and you show them, Hey, you're going to get worked. Yeah. Then when you get into the race and you're using them when you haven't before. Yeah. Then at that point, if they're already used to it, then it's not going to hurt as bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, but also, you know, like I said, I'm be being fair to everyone. Right. Courtney doesn't lift any well, weights. Yeah, there's like Sally. The Sally doesn't do deadlifts. Like, right. you know, I mean, I'm yeah. not. You know, I'm. I do things different. I think yeah. I think things are different, and I'm willing to test it. I'm sure people will shit on it, um, yeah. and I'm fine with nah. that. But you know, there's there's. There's both sides to it. But too. I think what's coming into ultra running, and for some it's maybe been there, and they, like you said, like Courtney May behind the scenes be doing all this stuff. Yeah. It's just not been the brand of ultra running to be in the gym. Yes. The brand of ultra running, the clicks, you know, come from beautiful scenery on their 150-mile yep. yep. weeks. Or um, Camille Heron, I don't know if you know who she mm -hmm. is. I love. She's the one who's been talking a lot about no more long runs. And so for yes. her, she's doing two hours max, and then she goes and wins Spartathlon in yes. Greece. That... Doesn't and work for And also, like, no back-to-backs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, like, 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 yeah, I, I, I think I read that with her where, because most of my athletes that I'm, that I'm like, if I'm peaking them for yeah. a race and their peak week's going to be, like, a 30 and a 20. Yeah. Or, you know, or, like, we did, yeah, I, we just did a couple weeks ago, one of my athletes was in town and we did, we did a 30 and a 10. Yeah. And, you know, or a, or a 25 and a 20. Yep. And and I've read a lot around that where people are saying like that's not it anymore. Right. But I'm still finding success in it for myself totally. along with my athletes. So once you get to high mileage, like hundred milers, I, it just seems like yeah, certain things work for certain people, but so much of it, and I think now as we kind of start to land the plane here on this discussion, one of the things that you seem to bring, uh, the, the the common denominator for everybody though, still is a mental toughness. Yes. And that also has been a weakness of mine, but I still have this ambition to, to get it. So for the final two questions, the first one is, you know, is about mental toughness. Like what, what is in your mind at the start of Leadville? Going into Rocky Raccoon this weekend, what are you, are you saying something to yourself? Have you made a decision? Like, I'm gonna finish this thing. Like what's in your head? Well, I'm gonna sneeze. It's <laughs> part of it. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Keep it. <laughs> um, so the biggest thing for me is I truly believe, like, this is what, and I wouldn't say this is mental toughness. This is what keeps me calm and collected. Yeah. 
And this is something like we were just talking about why I told you we just did this breath work. And we yeah. were having a discussion after is like, what is meant to be is meant to be. Hmm. And whatever is going to happen at Rocky Raccoon in three days yeah. is already set in stone. I believe that. There's nothing that I can do right now hmm. besides just probably jumping off a bridge and right. hurting myself. Yeah. There's nothing I can do right now that is going to make that race any better. Mm. So for me, I have never, I truly haven't. I, 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 I was trying to find the lie there and, and I have <laughs> never towed the line and been nervous hmm. and been upset. You know, like, like, like I've towed the line next to people, friends, that are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my God, what am I about they're to do? white, right. you know, and they're like, they're like, why did I do this? Right. And I'm just like, la, da, 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 you know, because, yeah. because it's just, you know, you've already done everything that, now, now yeah. I could see if like, which granted, I mean, this is just ignorant, but when I did Ironman Texas last year after the marathon, I didn't even train for it. I just did it. Yeah. And that's the race where I'm talking about my friend, where we're standing in the swim line yeah. and he's like, I don't know what's gonna happen. This is this is so bad. Like I'm white. I'm gonna throw up. Yeah. And I'm like so, maybe arrogant to the fact of yeah. like I haven't even trained. Yeah. And I haven't been in the water, in four months. And here I am getting ready to swim two point four miles. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, like like you know, here, like uh, if he drowns, he drowns. Yeah. Like, so I think it's I think it's being able to carry, you know, being able to tell yourself, and being able to believe it when you say it to yourself. Unlike yes, that's whatever. The trick. Whatever is meant to be is meant to be. If I if I go out to Rocky on Saturday and I DNF, yeah, okay, time to find the lesson. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. what 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 did I you know if I go out to Rocky and I win it, sick. You know I mean I mean <laughs> uh, great. Right. But whatever is meant to be is meant to be, and I think that yeah. that that that's the first step. Yeah. Is is approaching that start line with the mentality of like I've done what I've needed to do to get to this point. Yeah. I trust myself, I trust my training, I trust my instincts, yeah. I trust my faith. Mm. What you know, if you believe in God, whatever, I don't care. I do. Like for yeah. me it's like, you know, I I'm I trust everything. Like, right. like 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 I'm putting my trust in you. Here we go. Yeah. That's the biggest thing for me is like is having that feeling first. Yeah. Because you can take that feeling to mile 50. Yeah. You can get to 50. Like, 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 yeah. like you and I just talked, like, like, yeah. like, you can go 50 miles. Yeah. Then you get to 50. And I've been to the point at 50 where I'm falling apart, which is when I, when I broke the leg in September. Yeah. When I towed the line with three brakes and I had no idea. I just, you know, was an asshole and thought I was hurt. <laughs> and I get to 50. And I, and I remember, you know, I called a good friend of mine and I'm fucking bawling on the phone. Hmm. I mean, because I, I had led this race. Like, like I was oh, leading. Dang. I was in the lead. And I'm like, what do I do? Like, mm. you know, like, I'm, like, how can I? I knew it was coming. Yeah. I knew the DNF was coming, and I think that it was just me letting that emotion out. Yeah. And I was, you know, do I quit at 50? Like, you know, because it, it was an out and back. I'm like, mm. how do I quit knowing that there is? This is it right here. Just about what I'm about to say. Yeah. How do I quit knowing that there is a chance at success? Hmm. You know, so like, mm. here's the thing. What if someone said, walk down to that bridge down there, there is a chance that there is a million dollars on that bridge. They're like 50-50 shot, there's either a million dollars on that bridge or there's not. Yeah. Would you walk to that bridge? Of course. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, yeah. easier said than done. Right. But, but for me, it's like, I would... I would rather, that's where the saying, the risk over regret mm. is, 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 what we, is what we said before this, before the LA one, before the, the Saddle to Serp 100. Yeah. Is like, I would, I would rather risk it than to regret the fact that I never tried. Hmm. Right. And. Mm, that's good. And, 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 you know, and, and, it, and it's easier said than done. But, yeah. but to me, that, that's what I came up with on the phone with him in that moment was, how can you quit knowing that there's a chance? Yeah. And, right. and, and that's, and I think that I had that during Leadville one. Yeah. Because I knew when I stood up, it was done. Yeah. I knew it was done. Yeah. But how could I stop at 56 knowing that there was a chance that I could see that finish line? Yeah. So I walked 50 kilometers. Right. 
And I knew, I knew, like, like, like during that time when I left, I said, I have to hold a 20 minute per mile pace yep. in order to finish the Leadville 100. Yeah. And overnight, I kept looking at my watch, 26, 27, I've been 20, there. 24. Yeah. You, you know, everyone's been there, right? Yeah. Like, like where you see it. Yeah. But to me, it was just me saying, like, there is a chance. Yeah. There is a chance. Because I think that, as, like, we undervalue what our body is capable of. Mm -hmm. Because, as you probably experienced, right, you can be just shitting the bed at 30. Yeah. And the next thing you know, at 50, you get this, like, whoa. Because for me, when I called, when I called Bob on the phone and I was talking to him and I'm bawling. Yeah. And I'm like, I, like, like, like my leg's fucked. Like, I'm, I'm not going to make it. And he's like, you know, hmm. there's a chance. There's yeah. a chance. There's a chance. I get to 50 Dang. running 12-minute pace. 54 to 60, I was running 830 miles. After really? already bawling on the phone to him, telling, you know, so this is, this is about two hours later. Yeah. I'm running eight-minute miles. Now, I completely shit the bed after that. But, <laughs> but, but you, you got know, a few but, good but, miles but, in. But, but, but there's always, you know. Yeah. How was I capable of that when I'm crying on the phone saying, hey, I know that my leg is broken at, you know, at that point, and yeah. then I'm capable of you're running able, those type able of to miles? Turn around. What yeah. if I could have done 20, 20 of those miles and I would have never known because I quit? What if I would have quit when I called him on the phone yeah. and I would have never been able to tell you the story now yes. of I was able to run six miles at an eight-minute pace mm -hmm. even after I thought I was going to quit? Right. So there's so many... There's so many lessons in that. Yes. And to get past the point where you want to quit and find out what you're still capable of exactly. that you could yeah. still. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I, um, I don't know if you saw the other day, but I posted this reel with a caption, like with something that it, I was just sitting there and it came to me is with what we do, I always was chasing the finish line. Yeah. And I said, I became more as an athlete, as a man, as a human, when I stopped chasing the finish line and I started chasing what I could overcome. Hmm. Because you learn so much about yourself. Yes. Like, like, like you have however many 100s that you have DNF'd, would you say eight? Uh, seven? seven of eight. Yeah, you're like seven. Put some fucking respect on <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, give me some. <laughs> so you've DNF seven yeah. 100s, but you've probably learned more oh my God. in those seven DNFs yeah. Then I'm gonna learn in the next four or five years, right? Because I don't, I, I, I've, I've DNF twice, right? And I learned so much from, oh, so from much. Leadville, so much from Saddle to Surf. Yep. And you've done that, what, almost four more times than I have. Yeah. I mean, the, and I'm the, thankful the for each of them. I absolutely. Agree. And so, but when it comes down to okay, how do I, how do I not, I like you're okay, okay. I've learned enough. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I think it's carrying that, that mentality of what if. Just yeah. keep telling yourself what if, what if, what if, what if. Mm. And that's good. what if I go one more mile? Yeah. What if I go one more mile? What if I go one more step? Yeah. You know, you know break mm. it, break it, break it down that's good. so much. Yeah. To where like you get to that point where you get, you, and you know the point where you're like, I'm, like, like, I'm going to quit. Yes. And yep. you're like, what if I go one more step? Yeah. And you do that one more step. Yeah. What if I go one more step? Yeah. What if, what if, what if, what yeah. if? And that, hmm. now that I think about that, I, I, I've heard that saying before in an Iron Man. Yeah. Um, there was a lady, and she, she went up to a guy, and she's like, there was like a golf cart. And yeah. she's like, I quit. And he's like, no, no, nope, you don't. <laughs> you don't. He's like, I'll drive a mile up. And he's like, and if you want to quit, you can get in. Yeah. And she gets up there and he goes, he goes, do you want to, do you want to quit? And she's like, I want to quit. That's awesome. And he goes, I'll drive one more mile. And if you still want to quit, you'll get in. Yeah. You want to quit? I don't want to quit. Dude, that's awesome. That's great. I'll go a mile. And if you want to quit then, then you quit. Do you want to quit? I don't want to quit. Wow. And he, and he was. What a with, great way to break it down. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. You know, I mean, so that's something you need to tell yourself. And then on top of that, like, and I really, truly mean this, I would rather fucking die than quit. <laughs> like, like it, 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 I don't know what it is, man. I'll yeah. just, like, if it's just me, like, <laughs> I was sitting in that chair. I was sitting at that chair at Saddle of Surf. Yeah. And I was telling my buddies that were there, I was like, I'll walk this whole bitch right now. Like, <laughs> like, because I could walk. I'm like, but we're going to be out here for, 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 for 30 hours because yeah. that was such a, like, it was such a smaller race. Yeah. That like there was no cutoff. Like, yeah. like it was just, it was 100 miles. Yeah. And at that point, we were 75 deep. It was like 
17 hours, 16 yeah. hours, and it was like, no, maybe it was like 14 hours. I don't know. Yeah. Fuck, dude, I don't even think it was midnight at that yeah. point. Like, 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 cause yeah. I was hauling ass. Yeah. And I was like, I'll walk. I'm like, but we're gonna be here until 10 a.m. Like, you guys wanna be here until 10 a.m.? And everyone's like, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But so, so the consensus there was, you know, why we did pull out of that was, Number one, we knew that I was that I was injured and I wasn't just hurting. Yeah. And we also knew that like this is saddle to surf. This isn't Leadville. Right. This isn't UTMB. Right. This isn't, you know. Yeah. This is yeah. This isn't Western States. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like there's no reason, you know, you send me to the Western States and I'll snap my fucking leg in half before, <laughs> you know, I'll crawl that bitch. <laughs> like, but that's the thing, you know, is, yeah. is I think it's just there's something within you that you need to, and even laugh about, right? Like, right. like, 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 like when you get out there, you can almost you can almost joke yourself into that mentality. Mm. Like, just like what I like, you, you're laughing where you're like, I'll crawl that whole bitch, and yeah. like, I'll tell people, like, like I'll just, I'll be out there and I'll be like, I'll be like, I'd I'd rather put a gun to my head than lose than 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 you know, or you know. Or I'll pass somebody and I'll be like, hey, I'll see you at the finish line. Yeah. You know, you can almost joke yourself into the, like, yeah. Or you yeah, can almost, yeah, yeah. you know, talk yourself into the fact of there's so much about self talk. Yeah. And, you know, now don't get me wrong, like, like Leadville One, I remember, like, when I started in 2022, I was like, I was like, no matter what, I'm not gonna quit. Like, yeah. I remember having that conversation with my brother. I was like, I was like, no matter what, I will not quit. Do not let me leave. Cause at that point, I'd never done 100. I'm like, do not let me leave this course unless I am broken. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, cool. So I remember <laughs> one of the times during the overnights when it was raining yeah. and, you know, I was running, you know, I was walking the, the, the 25 minute miles. I remember thinking in my head, I was like, I'm going to tell him that I rolled my ankle and that like my ankle's broken. Like, you know, I was like, I was like I'm going to tell him that I'm like fucked up so that way I can quit. Yeah. Because I knew that I was like, I'm not going to make it. I've been there. And I was like, I was like, so I'm going to lie. Yeah. Totally been there. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him that this is going on. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I'm just gonna text him and tell him right now, so that way he knows. And for some reason, like, I just talked myself. Like, I was like, no, I was like, I'm gonna tell him at the next aid station. Yeah. And then you get there to the aid station, and you're like, uh. I'll tell him at the next aid station. Yeah. You know, you know. So, it, <laughs> and, and and that goes back to the saying of, just one more step. Yeah. Just one more step. One more step, yeah, and that's what I think it is. Is is, and there's power in being a cocky, arrogant motherfucker to yourself. Mm. Like, yeah, like waking up and because truly, like I, I don't, I, I, there's, I'm not the best. I'm not even close to the best. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even close to being close to those guys that are the best. Right. And I, and I don't know if I ever will be. Mm. But I sure the fuck will talk like I am. I will wake up and I will look in the mirror and I'll be like, you son of a bitch, you are the best. <laughs> and, and I'll tell everyone, and I'll tell everyone that I'm the best. Like, yeah. and I, and I, and I, because me speaking that out loud, uh -huh. you hear it, you know? And the yeah. more, like, like, here's the thing, if you're growing up as a kid and your mom is sitting there and she's like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. What are you gonna think? Well, fuck yeah. me. You're right, right, you know? right, right. And it, but if your mom's there and she's like, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Hmm. You're gonna feel loved, Yeah. right? So why don't we, there's, why don't we do that to ourselves? People don't do that to themselves. Yeah. To, right. to waking up and being like, I'm the best. I tell my friends that I'm the best. I tell, you know, they, I tell them that they're the best. Yeah. You know, hmm. words are so powerful and if I go around and I, you know, I, I show up to the to the start line at Rocky and I'm like, I'm the greatest dude out here. And everyone's like, fuck that guy. And I'm like, yeah, fuck him. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm the best. I'm the best. And then, you know, you come in like 976th place. Yeah. And then you're still walking to the finish line. He's like, I told you I was the best. <laughs> I told you. That's so, great. you know, it's, it, it's, it's carrying the humor. Yeah. But, but really, like, it's the funny stuff. Yeah. But it works. Yeah. It does. It does yeah. work. Like, yeah. you know. I love that. And, and you know, when, when you're injured, like, you know, going through this injury, like, yeah. and that's something that we were talking about in that breathwork session this morning is yeah. like, you know, she's like, are you, are you, are you putting the same, the same power into telling yourself that you're healed as you are to telling yourself that you're going to win the BPN marathon, that you're going to, yeah. you know, hmm. win the ultra. Like, are you, are you carrying the same energy into that's telling yourself that? Yeah. And that kind of hit me as well. You know, I'm like, no, because 
When I won the BPN Marathon, I said, I'm going to win the BPN Marathon. When I finished Leadville, I said, I'm going to finish Leadville. Hmm. When I won the Ultra, I said, I am literally told my grandmother as I'm walking out the door, staying her house, I was like, I'm going to win this whole thing. And she's like, okay, you know? <laughs> so saying it over and over again, yeah. you know, you're calling it into fruition. Uh, yeah. But then when it comes down to like, you know, you're like, oh, my back hurts. Yeah. You know, and you're like, yeah, like I get this pain in my back. No, 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 no. Hmm. You know, it's like, hey, like my back is fine. Like, like my, like mm. I've been having, I've been having hip issues this whole week. Never had hip issues in my life. That's what we were doing the breath work about this morning was yeah. like trying to get me out of that headspace. Oh. And you know, so it's like yeah. my hip is fine. I'm fine. My leg is fine. This yeah. is fine. We don't speak that enough either. Yeah. And you know, then you get out there in that race and you're like, because the pain is so deep that we fixate on it. And it's like, you know, yes, you, you it want, becomes, yeah, because it's a fixation. It's yeah. like, a, it's an obsession. That's a mental And if you can, if you can get away from that yeah. and be like, this is fine, this is mm. fine. This is supposed to happen. This, oh, this is supposed to be there. That's good. You know? Yeah. I'd be surprised if I did like, I'm yeah, running a yeah. hundred miles. What do I expect? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, yeah. I, That's so good. yeah, I mean, I That's like, so you know, I ran, I finished Leadville. I remember I, I finished Leadville. I had on the Nike Ultra Flies, the brand new shoes really? that had just came out. Uh -huh. I actually got them before Leadville from okay. Nike. Okay. And they gave me a prototype. And they gave me a nine. That's awesome. Uh -huh. And it fit like an 11. Okay. And I wore it anyways. I had seven blisters on the bottom of each foot. Oh, your foot just sliding through that shoe. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Just, and I, you know, but me, I'm like, bro, like Nike gave me these shoes, bro. <laughs> I was like, I need to wear them. <laughs> and, and so, long story short, I remember getting out there at 25. Or at, I'm sorry, at, 70, at 75 at Leadville, and I remember walking and I stopped. My buddy Austin's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just taking a mental picture real quick. Because I was in the most pain that I had ever been in my entire life. I literally, excuse me, I literally stopped. And I just stood there like this. I was like, I'm taking a mental picture. He's like, of what? I'm like, of the fact that I feel like I'm walking on fucking glass right now because I've never experienced this oh and God, I want that. to, and I want to remember it. Yep. But for me, it's like, that think about that mentality mm -hmm. instead of being like oh my god i need to sit down right. i need to like yeah. you know i need to put my feet up yeah no no, no. i want to stop and i want to be like click you know like That's, like like hold it there and then be like i'll be like i'm gonna laugh about this yeah. as soon as i'm done and if i keep going i'll be done sooner yeah all right so i'll wrap it with this story because it's it's so in line with what what you just said the 100 miler i finished my buddy cordell was pacing me uh, middle of the night in the Zion Desert and I'm like doubled over and he's like, what's wrong? So I mean, I'm having this pain in my leg and so he, I mean, just an amazing pacing friend, like he, he'd get down and just like help massage yeah, yeah. my leg for me. And at one point I'm just doubled over and he's like, what's going through your head right now? Like, let's just get it out there. And I said, despair. And he said, despair? Have you ever felt despair before? And I said, I thought I had, but I have not. He's like, can you believe how awesome this is? Uh -huh. you're, you're experiencing yes. something for the first time yes. right now. And I, it was just like this moment of like, oh my God. Yeah. Even this like even despair felt beautiful. Yeah. I was like, and then, and then you're when, right. Yeah. And when you think about that, something else that I that I also think about is is being grateful to even, right. to even be able to do that. It's so wild. And yeah. and you know, I remember summiting Hope's Pass this year. Mm-hmm. And I, I bawled. Mm. I bawled at the top of his pass because I was like, D like I've never been this close to this guy. Like I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. Like 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 look at that. Like yeah. how how grateful. Think about all. Think about the people that are born into a wheelchair. Yeah. They'll never see the top of Hope's Pass. Yeah. Think about the people that are you know born into a wheelchair. They're never gonna see UTMB. Right. They're never going to see Western states. Yeah. They're never going to summit the tallest point of anywhere. Yeah. And you and I can just walk out there and, and, and we can sign up for some random race and just hike up Hope's Pass and right. go to the top. Yeah. yeah. How fucking ungrateful to, to not feel that. Right. You know, and... Gosh, yeah. And that's a big thing for me is like when I get in these, in these spaces of, of hurt and pain... Mm -hmm. Think about the fact that those people will also never get that sense that you felt when you crossed that finish line. They'll never feel that. Yeah. Because they don't have, they don't, like, they're, they can't, they don't, right. they don't have the capability to do that. Yeah. So why, why take advantage of that? Yeah. To where you get to choose to go out there and do that. Yeah. Why would you quit? <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's a good way to end. Matthew, thank you so much, man. Yes, sir. I really appreciate thank you. you. I yeah. appreciate it. All right. Good luck at uh, Rocky Raccoon. Yeah. Well, fuck around and find out. It's the only <laughs> way to really do it.